So Jennifer, are there any predictions at this point as to what is going to come out of that meeting? Well, I think after this week, we're going to be able to make a lot of predictions because not only are we going to get the Fed notes from September, the consumer price index, the producer price index are going to drop. You're also going to have um, major earning reports coming out. PepsiCo, Walmart, excuse me, PepsiCo, Walgreens and Domino's Pizza, they're all going to be releasing their earnings. A lot of the big banks are going to be releasing their earnings on Thursday. This is going to give us sort of a crystal ball to look into the future and see what our economy is going to do. And there's a lot of worry. It's going to be a bear. What is the International Monetary Fund seeing coming down the pipe? Yeah, well, they're looking across the global economies and seeing that there's just been a tightening and a restriction that we continue to have prices outpacing earnings and wages. And this is a real problem. And of course, the war in Ukraine, Russia's assault on Ukraine continues to drag because of countries like America not having the proper energy policy to help out the free world. And this is a real problem. You know, the United States um, has a moral responsibility to pro have good energy policy because it's not just for us here domestically to have lower gas prices. We're leaving leaders of the free world and our energy policy matters. So I think it's something for us to think about and look at and to make sure moving forward that we do a better job. How will this change things for these workers and what's caused investors to be worried? It's going to hurt workers is what it's going to do. You know, there are people that want the flexibility to go and basically be entrepreneurs, right? When you do um, Uber Eats or you drive your Uber, you are an entrepreneur. You get to set your hours. You get to work as much as you want. You get, and, and depending on how you behave now, you can be given tips, et cetera. And I think that this is something that once again, the central planners, the government feels that they have to intervene. The consumer and the entrepreneur, the Uber driver, are perfectly wor are working out, right? And they're able to set prices based on how busy it is, et cetera. When central planners get involved, it never works out well. The prices will be higher for the consumers who can choose other things. But for the workers, they're gonna lose opportunities. You know, America has its highest debt load um, it's ever had in, in its entire history, up in the trillions. So, um, you know, that's something that may or may not be a good thing. I think the concerning part is that the people who are getting approved for credit are taking on riskier mortgages. So um, the adjustable rate mortgage is making a comeback. And the problem with that is we already have high interest rates that could end up going much higher depending on thing, what the Fed does and et cetera over the next 10 years. So I think, you know, not being approved for credit right now um, can be problematic to the economy, but I think for individuals, it might be a blessing. Uh, Best Buy not letting Amazon soak up all the sales. It actually launched a 48-hour flash sale. So, Jennifer, do you see this becoming very competitive during the holiday shopping season? Well, it should be. If people know that it's happening, they're going to have to spend a, a, a lot of money to make sure that people know that they're doing it as well. But here's the problem. On this competition, it's no longer about brand, right? It's about price. So you need to be the Walmart then uh, of this endeavor, and you need to really undercut Amazon. Otherwise, what is the value add? If I'm, I'm Best Buy, I'm really thinking about how do I distinguish myself in this marketplace? What is my, what I, you know, you call the moat, you know, what is the moat between me and my competition? And I think this has always been Best Buy's struggle since Amazon came on the scene, how are they differentiating themselves more than being, as some people call it, uh, Amazon showroom? Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg debuted a pro VR set worth 1500 bucks, uh, about 15 seconds. What exactly does it do? Yeah, well, it's, it's another uh, form of virtual reality. And the question is, what is it going to do to advance the metaverse that Zuckerberg thinks that he's building? You know, a lot of people are questioning whether he has what it takes to take the Facebook metaverse into the next iteration. He just, there's just a, a damning article um, from a Harvard leadership expert saying Zuckerberg really has lost a lot of what made him successful and what made Facebook what it is. And he is not going to be able to take the metaverse to, to the next level. Remember, he had the largest stock drop in history just this last February um, because of the way he leads the company. So I think it's really questionable whether this does or does not take them to the next level.